welcome to another edition of Healthy Living on Trust TV. I'm Aisha Salihu. On this episode of the program, we're talking about some health concerns related to the feminine gender. Women represent the cornerstone of a family's overall health. Ensuring they have access to quality care also can lead to improved health for children and families. The health of families and communities are no doubt tied to the health of women. The illness or death of a woman has a serious and far-reaching consequences for the health of her children, family, and the community at large. Today, women's health is taking on a higher position in society as people have come to realize that while women have many of the same diseases as men, their symptoms and treatments may not always be identical. However, most women are not aware of some of these medical conditions are tied to the gender. One of such is polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS, a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges. The cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome isn't well understood, but may involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Reports show that it is very common in Nigeria as a case of 100,000 is recorded every year. Let's take a look at these facts about polycystic ovarian syndrome while Dr. Mary Ogbe, a consultant gynecologist and obstetrician, gives us more insight. Major facts and common symptoms of PCOS are the ovaries produce an abnormal amount of androgens, male sex hormones that are usually present in women in small amounts. Hair growth in unwanted areas such as the face or chin, breasts, stomach or thumbs and toes. Also, hair loss such as thinning hair on the head. Acne or oily skin. Hormonal changes due to PCOS can cause oily skin and pimples, although one can have these skin problems without PCOS of course. Darkening of skin which looks like a thick dark velvety patches of skin under the arms or breasts and on the back of the neck and in the groin area. Big swings in the menstrual cycle which leads to heavy periods or irregular periods. This ultimately affects fertility. PCOS is one of the leading causes of infertility in women. About half of women with PCOS struggle with weight gain or have a hard time losing pounds. PCOS can make one gain a lot of weight. Polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS as it is called is um, it's an endocrine disorder of seen in women uh, of the ovaries. It's a hormonal disorder affecting women. Some persons may not be aware of the existence of this PCOS in their system. What are the symptoms, perhaps signs that show that someone has PCOS? Well, um, it is a syndrome that occurs in the reproductive um, age and uh, the commonest method of presentation is irregular menstruation. Most times absent menstruation or reduced menstrual volume which comes infrequently and then um, another way it present is infertility, it present with infertility. You can also present with uh, the woman being obese or sometimes they are not obese but they may have facial health or abnormal a male kind of hair distribution. Uh, so those are some of the ways that it presents. Well, the cause of PCOS per se is not known but um, it's, it's been found to be associated with increase in some of the hormones that controls the woman's reproductive tract. Its cause is not particularly known, but it's been found to be associated with some, some abnormal healthy dieting and a sedentary lifestyle. And uh, sometimes it just happens without, without um, those factors that we've mentioned. So what are the health risks for women with PCOS? Well, um, it can come in form of infertility or come with hirsutism, what we call hirsutism, as abnormal male kind of hair distribution, excessive hairs on the face or even on the head or on the abdomen like that. It can also come with, you know, irregular menses, like I say, scanty menses, can skip menses for even up to a year. And then um, some people can come with insulin um, insensitivity and then predispose them to begin to have futures that 
look like uh, diabetes. Yes, yeah, so those are some of the ways I present. Well, commonly, why we see them is because of menstrual irregularity and fertility issues. Yes. Mm. So diagnosis, how is PCOS diagnosed? Now, as a clinician from the history, when you take the history from the woman, you begin to have an idea that you could have PCOS, uh, polycystic ovary. The, the, the PCOS is a syndrome. So it's not just one thing. It's, it's a combination of factors that makes up a syndrome. So by the time you take history from, from the patient, you have an idea. Could she be having a polycystic ovary? And then you go ahead and do some investigations. Some of the investigations we do, oh, you examine the person. You, you may see those features of excessive hairs and have beards and excessive hairs, hairs on the chest, abnormal uh, distribution of the pubic hair hairs. And then you can see very darkening, thick darkening of the, of the armpits, you know. Those are some of the things that we look for. Then we go ahead and do hormonal tests, some hormone tests, and then we'll do ultrasound. When you do it uh, scanning, in people that have polycystic ovary, you see that there are multiple cysts that are arranged at the periphery of the ovary. Those, that's usually the classical symptom. Multiple polycystic means multiple cysts arranged at the periphery. Then the middle of the ovary is dense. Yeah. So PCO is infertility. How does it affect fertility okay um i told you that it comes with hormonal hormonal imbalance and so you find that there's a particular hormone that is supposed to be lower than the other the lh is luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone usually the luteinizing hormone should be lower than the the follicle stimulating hormone at at some um stage of the cycle you find you know in pcos you find that the luteinizing hormone is raised raised sometimes raised far above the follicle stimulating hormone so that kind of distorts the ability of the follicles or the eggs to form properly in the ovary so you have you see it's like when you have a lot of people full in this room now around the periphery you see that those in the middle will almost be choking for air that's the picture you have with polycystic ovary and so it will not allow the follicles to form properly in the ovary so yes they have polycystic but the eggs they form usually are not very high quality eggs so that's how it does affect um, fertility they are not able to produce good eggs yes and because they, they, they don't ovulate, I mean, an ovulation, you may not be ovulating regularly, yes. If a person is diagnosed with PCOS, should they seek a fertility doctor first before trying to conceive? No, they should, they should start trying. I mean, for you to be that, okay, as in you are single, you are not married yet, and uh, no, sometimes um, what we say is the natural cause, but sometimes you have them conceive spontaneously. And so if you have tried to conceive, uh, to conceive and it's not coming, then you, you seek advice from the fertility specialist. So what is a common fertility treatment protocol for PCOS, for a woman with PCOS? Um, usually, for those who are overweight and menstrual irregularities, sometimes when they do a lifestyle change, change habits and reduce their weight. Sometimes for some that's enough to correct the menstrual cycle and then enhance them to get pregnant. The other things that we could do is to stimulate ovulation because I've told you one of the problems they have is an ovulation. So we use drugs to stimulate ovulation. Where that doesn't work, we can use injections to stimulate ovulation. If that still doesn't work, you could advise them to go for IVF. Yes, and uh, sometimes even with the IVF, they may not be able to get good eggs. They could offer a donor egg or something like that. So You did talk about IVF. So let's talk about how IVF is carried out in polycystic ovary syndrome. Well, it's still the, the, the process of IVF in polycystic ovary is still the same way in other, in other in IVF in other issues. You stimulate the woman to 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 form follicles you hyper stimulate the woman to form follicles as you are stimulating you are monitoring the growth of the follicle with scan and with some hormonal test and when it reaches maturity you take the woman to theater put her to sleep collect the eggs 
and then fertilize the eggs with the woman's uh, spouse um, sperm and then days later you transfer the embryo back into the womb and that's the process of IVF. I know you talked about treatment before so let's go back to highlight the treatment. What is the treatment for PCOS? Well commonly the drug that uh, is used is clomiphene citrate and um, those are tablets and they are usually they are the commonest drug that we use. If that fails, we could use another one we call the trozor. The trozor is used to treat breast cancer, but it's also used to stimulate um, um, folliculogenesis and ovulation. Okay, so we use that. So those are the common oral drugs that are used. Where that fails, then we could use injections. You know, yeah. Well, the chances of multiples go up uh, whilst treating PCOS. Sure. Those are side effects of the medication. I'm curious, does PCOS have a cure? I said no, no, it doesn't have a cure, but the features that it present with, usually you target your treatment to the needs of the woman. If her problem is the excessive hair that is growing, uh, then you, you focus on that and treat. If it is the weight, you focus on that. If it's fertility, you focus, but usually there is, um, it doesn't seem to have a cure. Yes, you just treat the needs of the woman. How does a PCOS patient manage the condition, the PCOS? Well, uh, a lot of cancer, usually we cancel, and uh, uh, is to explain the disease condition to the person and then to have a positive attitude to it. And then whatever the symptom that it is, yes, you target your treatment to, that is how it goes. Mm -hmm. If it is um, that you're not menstruating frequently, um, sometimes we use the combined oral contraceptive pills to see how we can regularize the cycle. But again, for a woman who is young, you can't continue it indefinitely. So it's to counsel the person that, yes, this is the condition that you have. When you want to conceive and it's not coming, then we'll focus on that. Because you can't be, some people, I find that some young ladies, they just take drugs every month to help them bleed, bleed like that. But I think it's, it's not necessary. We target the treatment. That's, so we encourage them. This is the condition you have. It's not because you did anything wrong. It's just it's just there. But it's, there are things that can be handled as they arise. It's becoming diagnosed more frequently now because of our dietary habits. You know, we encourage people to eat healthy uh, because all these fast foods and all that and the lack of activity, sedentary lifestyle. They predispose to, to, to developing PCOS. So by the time you see a young adolescent with very huge weight, and of course, the next thing is you, you see that you have menstrual irregularity and polycystic growth. So we encourage people to be active and also eat healthy. I think that's most important. And exercising, yes. We got to learn a lot about PCOS. Let's go on a quick break.
Welcome back. You're watching Healthy Living on Trust TV. The conversation around women's health care cannot be exhausted. Our next focus is on urinary tract infections, also called UTIs. UTIs are more common in women. They usually occur in the bladder or urethra, but more serious infections involve the kidney. In Nigeria, more than 1.5 million cases are recorded per year. Dr. Mary Ogbe, a gynecologist and obstetrician par excellence, has more insight on this. An infection is said to be the invasion of and replication in the body by any of various agents, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoans, and worms, as well as the reaction of tissues to their presence or to the toxins that they produce. Although urinary tract infections are more common in women, men can get them too, as they occur when bacteria build up somewhere along the urinary tract. A silent UTI is just like a regular UTI, only without the typical symptoms that prove the immune system is fighting off the infection. It is why those with weaker immune systems, especially the elderly, are more prone to silent UTIs. Urinary tract infections are risky to begin with. When a UTI occurs more than twice in six months or three or more times in one year, it is considered to be a recurrent urinary infection, according to the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists. A chronic urinary tract infection is a repeated or prolonged bacterial infection of the bladder or urethra, the tube that carries urine from the bladder out of the body. While urinary tract infections are common, some women suffer from repeated or recurrent infections. Women suffering from chronic urinary tract infections may have two or more infections in a six-month period or three or more infections in a 12-month period and symptoms that don't disappear within 24 to 48 hours after treatment begins. UTIs cause more than 8.1 million visits to healthcare providers each year. About 60% of women and 12% of men will have at least one UTI during their lifetime. A urinary tract infection that lasts longer than two weeks is a chronic urinary tract infection, which can be painful and frustrating, but effective treatment is available. Bladder infections are a type of UTI, but not all urinary tract infections are bladder infections. A UTI is defined as an infection in one or more places in the urinary tract, the ureters, kidneys, urethra, and bladder. A bladder infection is just a UTI that is located in the bladder. Although painful bladder syndrome, also known as PBS or interstitial cystitis, is not caused by an infection, but it can feel like a urinary tract infection. It is also possible that the symptoms may not be caused by a bladder infection, but instead may be caused by an infection in the urethra the tube that allows urine to pass out of the body, or an inflammation in the urethra might be causing the symptoms rather than bacteria. Having a suppressed immune system or chronic health condition can make one more prone to recurring infections, including UTIs. Diabetes increases the risk for a UTI as does having certain autoimmune diseases, neurological diseases, and kidney or bladder stones. Most UTIs can be cured, Bladder infection symptoms must often go away within 24 to 48 hours after treatment begins. If you have a kidney infection, it may take one week or longer for symptoms to go away. One of the fastest home remedies for UTIs is to stay hydrated. Urinate when the need arises. Practice good hygiene. Wipe from front to back when one uses the restroom. Try to avoid lemons oranges, grapefruits, and tomatoes when treating a UTI. Cranberry juice may help prevent UTIs by keeping bacteria from adhering to the lining of the urinary tract. Keeping the pelvic floor dry and wearing cotton underwear can prevent UTI. Taking showers instead of bath and avoiding tight clothes that can trap bacteria near the urethra. While these are simple enough to do, none of them are supported by scientific data. Urinary tract infections are common in women with PCOS and in later years during perimenopause and menopause. But if caught early, they are easy to support naturally. There are 
A variety of reasons why women with PCOS may experience bladder issues and urinary incontinence. Many women also have unusually high testosterone levels and it is thought that these high testosterone levels could be contributing towards bladder issues. Being overweight can also put pressure on one's pelvic floor muscles which support the bladder and bowel and this can also lead to incontinence. Urinary tract um, starts with the from the kidneys. The kidneys are in the low and at the back of the abdomen. You have the bean-shaped organs. Then you have the ureters that carry the urine from the kidney down to the bladder. I have a picture here, but it's not a full picture. But maybe I can show it. Okay, so if you look at this, it's not um, a complete picture, but the bladder is usually somewhere here up here so you have ureters that carries the urine this is the bladder okay so this is the bladder the ureters carry the urine to the bladder and then from the bladder the urine comes out through the urethra so that's how the urinary system works the urinary system is the one that takes care of all the the things that your body doesn't want the food that we eat is broken down and the, the, the ones that are not necessary for the body, that are harmful to the body, the urinary system filters it and then you pass it out as urine. So that's how the urinary system works. So what does urinary tract infection mean? What does it mean? It means infection along the urinary tract. Infection from the urethra, the opening of the urethra, to the urethra, to the bladder, the ureter, up to the kidney. That's infection of the urinary tract. It can be caused by bacteria, by fungus, by virus. Yeah. But things that cause infection in other places can cause infection along the urinary tract. Are there symptoms? What are these symptoms? By the time you're passing urine and you have a, it's burning you as it's coming out, most likely you have a urinary tract infection. It also comes with fever, you can have a fever, or you can have going to pass urine very frequently and you go, you feel like passing urine and you go, you pass very small volume urine and you are going frequently. And as you pass the urine, is, you feel a burning sensation where the urine is coming from. You can also present with fever. You can present with pain in the lower abdomen. All right. You can also present with pain at the lower back when the infection is that of the kidney. So that's how it presents. Now let's go down to prevention. Can urinary tract infections, can they be prevented? Well, preventing, well, I always, I always would talk in the context of the woman because um, I'm a gynecologist. In the woman, um, women are more predisposed to urinary tract infection for reasons. If you look at this picture, this is the, 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 the womb. Hmm? This is the service. This is the bladder. It comes out at the urethra. Behind here, you have the rectum, the, the anus, which opens into the, leads into the rectum, where stool comes from. So in the woman, the three structures are very close together. So it's very easy to contaminate this place with stool. Hmm? Even the, the secretions from the vagina, it's all, it's all easy to contaminate the urethra. So preventing it means good pelvic hygiene is very important. And that will bring me to talk about how do you wash in a woman after passing stool. If you wash or you use tissue to clean like this from the back to the front, you know you'll be contaminating the urinary tract. So the teaching is wash from the front to the back. If you are cleaning with tissue, clean once from front to back and don't bring it back. So that's one of the ways to prevent it. And then a good pelvic hygiene, you should take your bath and wash well. And the other thing is an opportunity for me to talk about it. I hear people say that you don't wash your private part with soap. And I don't know where that teaching came from. You wash the outside with soap and water, mild soap. If you are using medicated soap, we don't advise you to wash the private part with medicated. You can use toilet soap to wash the outside of it. Do not douch. Do not put your finger in the inside to wash. That's what we discovered. But yes, washing the pelvis, the perineum with soap and water is necessary for good pelvic hygiene. And then if you have the symptoms that we talked about, you should seek 
professional advice and treatment. For urinary tract infection, it must be treated properly. Because if you don't treat it properly, the infection lingers and then it can cause kidney problem, kidney failure. And we begin to talk about dialysis and transplant. So it's important if you have these symptoms we talk about, seek professional help. Don't just go and start buying drugs and start taking because when you seek professional advice, we will not just start loading you with drugs. We want to know what organism is causing the infection, what drug does the organism want, and then we treat specifically. Yes, but I, I am emphasizing this because there is a lot of abusing of, of antibiotics. By the time the patient is coming, he has used different antibiotics, and that shouldn't be. So briefly highlight the treatment and management techniques of UTIs. The organism causing the infection, most times, when we take, when you come to us, we do a test. Do you have a urinary tract infection? The test will show. And then if there is a, an organism causing it, then we'll do a sensitivity test. What drug does this antibiotic, the, does this organism want to treat it effectively? Do you understand? So that's how we do it. So lastly, what are the details about UTIs as worthy of note? Well, the emphasis is when you have a burning sensation when you pass urine, you have a fever, it's not all fevers that are malaria. Hmm? There is a need to seek professional advice. You have a pain on your back and all that. We should form the habit of visiting hospitals instead of self-medicating most times. That's my advice. At each stage of a woman's life, there are important precautionary healthcare steps to follow in order to provide early detection of medical problems. Many women may neglect healthcare exams for a number of reasons. However, in the end, it comes down to whether or not you wish to make yourself a priority after putting so much energy into caring for the lives of others. It is time women deserve that same level of care toward themselves. Until I come your way on another interesting package of healthy living, it's bye for now. I'm Aisha Salihu. <music>